Hello, how is everyone? Uh, it's Ama and I am back with another video. And this video, listen, very important. So this video is, shh, do not tell the narcissist your secrets at all. They will only use it to damage you, okay? So, come and take a walk with me on this journey of healing, and let's talk about this together. Okay, so I really wanted to do this video because I think it's very important to understand that the narcissist always wants to know things about you especially during the love bombing stage where you're being idealized you're talking for hours and the narcissist is basically taking all the information that you give them putting it into their uh narc's bag of tricks because they're going to go back to that bag of tricks in time to actually use the information that you give them against you so let me start off by asking you a really quick question do you notice that the narcissist will want to know everything about you? Everything about you, right? But you know very little about them, right? The narcissist wants to know your childhood memories, um, you know, what age you were when this happened and how did you react to this and who's hurt you in your life and who's disappointed you and betrayed you and things of that nature. They want to know all these things. What was your most painful uh, childhood moment? What was your most, you know, your biggest letdown? you this. Why did you and a particular person have a fight? What, what did you fight about? How did it uh, impact you? They want to know all of this because they're kind of putting it into categories um, and they're storing this information to use against you. Now, the first question that I asked is, you will notice that the narcissist will know a lot about you, but you really don't know that much about them. To find out anything about a narcissist, you usually have to go on a scavenger hunt. Um, and if they do tell you things about them, it's probably not true. It's, 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 a, it's, it's fiction. They're giving you stories to make it seem like you and them share things in common so that you will open up more and begin to tell more and more and more about your personal life. So I want to give you a few examples of how this was used on me. So as I said in previous videos, I actually started dating my narcissist when, while I was going through a divorce, right? And I'm very protective um, over my ex-husband. Um, he wasn't a horrible person. We got married young. We kind of grew up and grew apart. But I still love and care for him and his well-being. And he still loves and cares for me and my well-being. And we kind of co-parent wonderfully with our kids. And it's just one of those mutual respect things where it's like, we're not meant to be together. I love you. You love me. You know, we're good for the kids. The kids are healthy. They see that kind of relationship between us. And so, fine. I say all of that to say, the narcissist always wanted to know what was going on between myself and my ex-husband. If we were arguing about a particular thing, if we were, you know, and my divorce was pretty drama free, so to speak. I really, there were moments where, you know, we, we had our say about certain things, but it was relatively drama free. And that's because really at the core of myself and my ex-husband we were friends best friends and we were like that from the time we met so they were just things that i wasn't willing to do to hurt my friend and they were just willing things that he wasn't willing to do to hurt his friend right but the narcissist always wanted to know so i remember one day explaining to the narcissist like you know towards the end of my marriage my ex-husband and I, our communication really broke down. We really weren't communicating. You know, we were keeping a lot of things bottled inside. I had my resentments. He had his resentments. We really weren't sharing those uh, resentments with one another. We were just kind of stewing in it, which actually made us fracture. The, the, the hairline fracture actually turned into an actual break, right? 
So I remember he would always want to know, and I said in a previous video, I think it was, is the narcissist making you sick? I never felt safe. I never felt emotionally safe with the narcissist. And so I was never really able to open up, open up because I, I couldn't articulate it, but something in me didn't feel safe. So one day we were talking about my, my past relationship and I was explaining, you know, my husband and I, my ex-husband and I, you know, we had kind of stopped talking towards the end. We really weren't communicating. Just what I explained to you. Now, I remember one day the narc and I got into an argument and he basically just emotionally threw up all over me, right? Just, just a verbal assault, right? And he was going off and off and off and off. And my immediate reaction was to kind of just like, pause, shut down, because I couldn't believe what was going on. So I, I said to him, I'm like, is this how you communicate? Like, I can't, I can't deal with this kind of communication because it was very much like the silent treatment. Then he would just kind of launch into a verbal attack and then he would retreat again and just be really quiet. And I explained to him, like, we don't have to go through these extremes. We can talk, we can talk like to adults. It doesn't have to be silent treatment or explosive, excuse me, explosive argument. We can actually talk civilly. And in the middle of me saying that to, to him, he looked at me and he goes, oh please, stop, try, stop trying to act like you're so above this. You didn't even talk to your ex-husband. That's why you guys broke up. You, you, you didn't even know how to communicate with him. So how are you going to communicate with me? Don't try that with me. You couldn't even communicate with him. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. My initial, my immediate reaction was to just shut down. I just shut down. Um, argument done. Conversation over. Because I could not believe that he had taken something that I told him about a prior relationship, which quite frankly, he was comparing apples and oranges. My ex-husband and I had a, a, we had a communication system, but anyone who's been through divorce will tell you at least the two or three years leading up to divorce, it breaks down. You could be the best two people in the world, but our communication broke down. And I couldn't believe that he was taking something that I told him that was so private and that was so like kind of dear to me. And he was, you know, throwing it at me in an argument, right? That was one. Two, I'm going to tell you how the narcissist really almost tried to destroy my self-esteem. So we would always sit down and talk about my childhood. And I remember telling him that, you know, my father, my father was, I told you before, my father has narcissistic uh, personality. And I was explaining to him that as kids, my father, every Saturday morning, my father would get up and he would go through this huge production in the house that he was going to leave my mother. He was going to go out for, for, for groceries and never come back home. Which would lead my sister and I to literally crying, screaming and crying. We would be holding on to his leg, crying, no, daddy, don't leave. Oh, daddy, come back. And every Saturday morning, like clockwork, my father went through this charade. My father also would do something like this to us. If we weren't at home and my father saw myself or my sister on the street, like if we were outside of the house, he wouldn't talk to us. He would not acknowledge us as his children. He wouldn't acknowledge our presence. I remember growing up, I would be on the same train as my father and my father would be looking down at a magazine, almost like I wasn't there, right? He never acknowledged us outside the house. He never, um, he always did things like that. Now, I remember also telling him one more story about my father, how my father was taking us back to school shopping one year and you know back to school shopping used to be so exciting when you were a kid we you know you're so happy and my father took us on the train we got to macy's my father said pick out what you want and my sister and i ran through the store picked out what we wanted and we couldn't find my father my father left us in the department store 
Um, I was probably 11. My sister was probably 13, 14, right? He left us in the store. He left us, right? Now, when he left us, this is what's important for you to know. My sister and I didn't even have any money on us. We literally, thank God, my sister knew her way around. We got to the train station and we asked the train clerk, like we told the train clerk, our dad just left us in the store and we have no money to get home. And she let us get through the turnstile to get on the train. And then when we got off the train, we walked home from there, which is about a 20 minute, 20 minute, half an hour walk from the train station my house was. So my father, right? So I expressed this to him. And wouldn't you know that the narcissist would use this against me? Of course, let me tell you how. The narcissist posted a picture of himself, which he always does, because he's so mad it. And the picture went viral. And a popular magazine found it and wanted to do an article on him, right? And he did the article, and in the article, they asked him if he was single. The narcissist told them no. I'm sorry, the narcissist told them yes, he was single. He didn't have anybody special in his life, things of that nature. And I remember the narcissist called me after the interview, and he was like, yeah, you know, they asked me if I was single. He was like, and, you know, I told them yes. He was like, because my spirit told me, you know, to say yes. And so I told them yes, that I was single and, you know, all this other stuff. And I just remember, now, I know what he was doing. Two things. One, he knew that this uh, magazine article was the potential for a massive amount of new supply. So he wasn't gonna shoot himself in the foot and tell these people that he was in a relationship. So he said no, but what he also did, what I noticed was he kept saying, well, how you feel, what, what, what's, what's going on? He wanted to trigger my abandonment issues. That was his goal. He wanted to trigger my childhood abandonment issues with my father. Because see how similar it was? My father wouldn't acknowledge me outside of the house. And here is this man now not acknowledging me when a newspaper article asks him or a magazine asks him if he's in a relationship. So it was, it was the same wound. And I remember getting off the phone and just feeling, I remember the feel being brought back to my childhood. Now, what was supposed to happen with the trigger is that it was supposed to make me try harder, just like I did when I was a kid with my dad, holding on to the pants legs, screaming and crying. But um, I was so angry and I was so hurt. I was so hurt because, like I said, it brought me back to that time in my childhood. So that was another way. The third way uh, that the narcissist would always try to find out my business at this time I started to smarten up when I started therapy it was always no surprise my therapy always took place on Friday nights the narcissist always wanted to come over my house I'm sorry Monday nights the narcissist always wanted to come over to my house Monday nights after my therapy session and talk about my therapy so what happened what did you guys talk about this week? What did you, what happened? And it was actually one of my therapy sessions that I told him the story about my father always abandoning us, like the story of him abandoning, abandoning us in Macy's, right? And how hurtful that was. So he would come over and he would try to get all my secrets, right? And I remember one day he was trying to get some of my secrets out of me. And I was like, you know what? I was like, um... This, I, 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 I'm, I'm really not comfortable with it. And I remember he stops and he goes, okay, well, listen, Amma. He goes, right, because I told him, like, you got to stop trying to, like, my spirit can't take the constant criticisms anymore. You got to stop. So he says to me, well, okay, Amma, fine. But if 
he's like, I can't go from one extreme to the next. I can't give you advice on certain things, but then you not tell me anything. He was like, so either, either you tell me everything or we're going to have to stop talking in, in that regard about your, you know, about your life. And I could tell he wanted me to say, okay, well, let's, let's keep talking. And I was like, okay. I said, that's probably a good thing because I need to be able to process what I go through in therapy on my own. So no, we won't talk about it. I'm okay with that. And he change, demeanor change. Okay, demeanor changed. Now, I say all of that to say that when I finally discarded the narcissist and decided to go no contact, wouldn't you know, the knife in the back came when he got on Facebook and started talking about my childhood. Oh, I can't deal with women who have daddy issues. They need to fix that S-H-I-T and get over that ish quick. And so now he's on Facebook talking all my business, all these very intimate and personal things. And why did he do it? Again, he did it to trigger that childhood wound because he knew I would probably see in my timeline, his rant, and I would click on it, which I did. This was the day after I discarded him. Um, he's all over Facebook talking about me. He didn't use my name. He was all over Facebook talking about me, talking about my childhood, talking about my issues with my father. Okay? So I'm going to end here because I don't want this video to be too long. But this is why I say time and time again, and I just want to reiterate do not tell a narcissist your secrets. Don't tell them your personal information. Everything that you tell them about you personally, your accomplishments, your failures, your joys, your weaknesses, they're going to use it against you once they begin to devalue you, right? And we're very free with this information during the idealization phase because we feel like we're bonding with the narcissist but you're not you're basically supplying them with information to wound you and stab you in the back at a future date at a later time so i want you to be very protective of that when dealing with a narcissist and this goes with narcissistic co-workers and and a narcissist narcissistic boss as well or a narcissistic friend if you have a friend where every time you and them have dis a disagreement they're on front street telling all your business no Mm -mm. red flag okay so i just wanted to tell uh to do this video on why you should never tell a narcissist your secret so please do three things for me at this time please like hit the like button if you like this video uh share this video if you feel it can help someone else please click the subscribe button subscribe and as always, comment below. I love the comments, okay? So again, thank you for taking this walk with me. It's Ama, and until next time, take care.